Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. My name is Brendan. I'd like to welcome you to New Hope Windward Online. Thank you for tuning in with us today. We're so glad that you're here. And in a few moments, we're going to hear a great message. But before we do, we are going to worship God through our giving. Many of you know me as the high school director of our youth ministry. I am super passionate about reaching youth for Christ and doing whatever I can to help them grow in their relationship with Him. I am also a proud dad of my three-year-old son, Liam. I love spending every chance that I can with him, whether it be playing with his train, swimming at my grandma's pool, or watching his favorite cartoons together. One of Liam's all-time favorite snacks to munch on while watching cartoons is popcorn. That little guy can devour an entire bowl of popcorn in a matter of minutes. And oftentimes when I give him a bowl of his favorite popcorn, as much as he's crazy about it, before diving into it for himself, he'll often look at me and offer me some first. And as a dad, I can't tell you how much that blesses my heart. In a similar way, all that you and I have, our families, our jobs, homes, finances, material possessions, all come from God. And we really don't own anything. Everything truly belongs to Him. Yet, God generously and graciously lets us use all of the things that He blesses our lives with. Now imagine how much we bless our Heavenly Father's heart when we take a portion of what He gives us and willingly offer it back to Him. Not because we have to, but because we want to out of our gratitude and love for Him. In 2 Corinthians 9-7, it says, Everyone should give what he wants in his heart to give. He should be glad to give it and should not give it because he was forced to give. God loves a person who gives gladly. Many of you generously and faithfully give back to God, gladly out of a heart filled with gratefulness and love for Him. And as a result of your giving, broken lives are healed and restored. Hearts are reached and eternities changed forever. And whole communities are transformed for God's greater kingdom good. That truly blesses God's heart. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate. By clicking the button on the upper right-hand corner of your screen, it'll take you to our website where you can give a one-time gift or have it reoccurring. Another way to give is by texting the word NEW DONATION to the number on your screen and follow the instructions, or if you prefer to mail in your gift, you can send it to the address below. Would you bow your heads with me as I lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, your word reminds us that as your followers, we are not to seek first to build our own earthly kingdom, but rather to focus our time, energy, and resources towards building your kingdom as that has true, lasting, eternal value. So we make the choice to align ourselves with your kingdom purposes, to bring hope to the lost and healing to the broken and hurting. So today we give back to you in the form of our tithe and offering, a portion of the many generous ways you've blessed our lives as we love you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, I want to welcome you to our New Hope Winnard online community. We'd love for you to share this link and invite your friends and family to tune into our services as well. We'd love to keep you informed and updated with all that's going on at New Hope Winnard. You can go ahead and text new gift to 45777 and we'll email you a Starbucks e-gift card as our way of saying welcome to New Hope Winward. Well, it's the final countdown. Next Sunday, New Hope Windward opens for in-person services on February 21st. Come join us for services at 7 a.m., 8.30, and 10 a.m. at Regal Cinemas in Windward Mall. We can't wait to regather for an amazing time of inspiring worship by our incredible worship team and a great message by Pastor Dave. We are looking forward to seeing all of you. We would like you to know that your health and safety is our top priority. So we'll be implementing a few safety measures when you attend our services. For your safety and the safety of others, please wear face masks at all times. If you don't have one, we'll gladly provide one for you. We'll be doing temperature checks as you enter any of the regal entrances. Hand sanitizers will be available throughout the lobby for your use. And our sanitizing team will be sanitizing all high touch areas in between services. We can't wait to see all of you again next Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll also be kicking off an exciting brand new four week series, Encountering God, where together we'll learn several pathways to experiencing God. And here's Pastor Dave to share one key pathway that'll help us encounter God in a powerful way. Well, we're a year into the pandemic and more people are more isolated and disconnected than ever before. And you know what? That is playing out with a rise in strained relationships, an increase in mental health issues, addictions, 
and all kinds of other challenges. And you know what this does is it reminds us that God has wired us to function best when we have relationships with Him and with others in the family of God. So that's why I'm excited to help you get connected to a group of friends by participating in one of our New Hope Winner small groups. What are small groups, you ask? Well, small groups are weekly gatherings of three or more people so that you can connect, so that you can have some fun, you can be supported, encouraged, and most of all, you can grow closer to God together. So whether you're new in your faith or you've been following Jesus for years or whether you want to meet in person or you're like, Dave, I'd rather meet online, we have a small group for you. So I'd like to invite you to host or join an Encountering God small group. It's simply just a few hours of your time each week that you invest for a four week period time commitment. So just once a week for a few hours for four weeks. So if you're interested in joining and gathering with some new friends or existing friends, I encourage you to consider hosting a group or joining a group. How do you do that? Here's what you do, it's really simple. You just text the number 45777 and you put these words into your text, new groups. It's that simple. Text new groups to 45777 or you can host or join a small group by simply going to our New Hope Winward website and just click on the small groups tab and we'll get you connected. Today we have a great message for you. So wherever you're joining us from today, would you join me in welcoming Pastor TJ? Well, hello everybody and welcome to New Hope Windward. Hey, it's great to have you here with us today. Uh, my name is TJ. I haven't had the privilege of meeting you yet and I'm a part of the teaching team here. I also want to say to you guys, happy Valentine's Day. Or as I used to call it for the majority of my life, happy Single Awareness Day. Yeah, I didn't get married until well into my 30s, and if I could be honest with you, this wasn't my favorite holiday. You know, I used to just think, let's just, let's just get past that one. And the truth is, though, is Valentine's Day is actually a bigger celebration of, than just romantic love. It's supposed to be a celebration of those you love all over the place. Matter of fact, uh, one of my pastor friends encouraged me this week, you know, he's writing cards for his kids this week. And do you remember elementary school? You used to give Valentine's to everybody. So it really is supposed to be just a celebration of love. Now, with that being said, I thought that what I would do is I'd help the guys out a little bit today, specifically if you are in a romantic relationship. And this is just as a little kind of fun introduction, because the truth is, is although I thought, man, I can't wait till I get married for Valentine's Day, I feel more stressed being married than I did when I was single. Right gift, the right thing, make sure she knows that I love her, you know what I'm talking about? So guys, I just wanted to give you just a little bit of help today. And I thought I would do that in a little bit of fun rain, not by telling you what to do, but telling you this. Five quick things of what not to do this Valentine's Day. Okay, you ready for this? Number one, I know it's COVID, but do not take her through a drive through for dinner. I get it. We've been doing that all year and that, but I'm telling you right now, if you take her to McDonald's, say, babe, this is just for me and you. Even if you let the supersize action go on, it's not going to cut it, guys. Or this one. Make sure that you don't buy her something that's really for you. Honey, you know, I, I just, I got you this brand new set of golf clubs. She's like, but babe, I, I don't even golf. Said, that's okay. You can start. You know, so honey, I, I don't even like golf. Now, I know some of you guys are out there thinking, oh man, I better go get something different. Well, the day's not over, so you got time, okay? Last couple ones, this. Do not give her a blank card. Guys, the bare minimum, you got to sign your name. And even more free help, put I love you before you sign your name. That's like winners right there. Number four, don't buy her a gift that has subtle criticism attached to it. Honey, I got you some great new workout clothes. Listen, guys, just steer clear of that whole world. You're welcome in advance. And lastly, if you're going to buy her a chocolate rose and do it, you better make it a dozen. One isn't going to cut it. Now, this is just kind of a fun way because you say like, wait, are we doing Valentine's Day and love this whole message today? No, no, no. I just wanted to have a little bit of fun with the holiday. The truth is, is what we're actually going to tackle today is something that I feel very passionate about. Uh, and it's for you if you're first time here in church. And if I can be really honest with you, it's for you if you've been in church for 25 years. It's something that universally we all ask ourselves. And it's this question. I titled my message, how do I know what God wants me to do? You ever found yourself asking that question? 
I know I have. You know, you're, you're considering different things, maybe with your career. Should I, I go down this direction and work with these people, or should I do this? Or maybe you're in a, a season where you're trying to figure out, like, you're young and you're in college, and what school should I go to? Should I go to this one or, or that one? Or how do I do this? And God, like, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. I just, I don't know which one it is. Maybe it's in the dating space. Should I date this guy? Should I date this guy? God, what do you think? And I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes I kind of just, like, Almost wish that God would just kind of like, just like write it in fire in the sky. Anybody else feel like that? And it's like, the problem for me at least isn't necessarily that I don't want to do what God wants to do. I totally want to do that. The problem is I just have a hard time sometimes figuring out exactly what it is that God wants me to do. And can I tell you, in the 18 years that I've been a pastor, I found that to be the case for so many people. Their heart is totally good. It's just it's a little hard to figure out what exactly, God, are you asking me to do? Or what exactly should I do in this different situation? And so if you've ever found yourself asking any of those questions, today's going to be a great place for you. And I really feel like God's going to just show up and speak to us in the midst of this, okay? But uh, what we're going to do to kind of like figure this out is we're actually going to jump in and we're going to look at Jesus because Jesus was the master of really following God's will. And today what I wanted to do is I wanted to take it a step up a little bit. I'm going to take maybe a familiar passage, but I'm going to give you the 2.0 version, meaning I'm going to talk about a little bit of these nuances that makes it a little bit more difficult to figure some of this stuff out. And then we'll tie it up together and really start to practice ways that we can have God speak to us on a regular basis and guide us. So let's jump in. We're going to be in John chapter 7 if you have your Bibles. Hey, if you don't, it's not a big deal. Uh, it'll come up right here on the screen and this is what it says. Now, the Jews had the Feast of Booths and it was at hand. Now, let me just give you a little tidbit here. Uh, the Feast of Booths was a special festival that every Jewish person knew about. And it happened like the same time every year. Uh, a modern day example would be like Christmas. Christmas happens every year on December 25th. It's just kind of like a very steady pattern. And what happened was, is there was a couple festivals that all the Jews would come together. So the Feast of Booths was one of them. And so it's the time for that. And so his brothers, Jesus' brothers said to him, leave here and go to Judea, that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. So what they're saying is, listen, we want you to go to the festival and just reveal yourself publicly. Jesus had been teaching on the side, doing some public ministry, but he never came into like the real public life arena. And so they're trying to encourage him to do this. Jesus says to them, though, and he says, my time has not yet come, but your time is always here. You go up to the feast. I'm not going up for this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. Now, what I want us to do today is I want us to pay attention to one word in this scripture, and it's this word. You see it here, it's the word time. It says, my time has not yet come, but your time is always here. And again, for my time has not yet fully come. Now, if you are in a place where you don't read Greek, which is pretty much every single one of us, uh, you would never know that this to be actually true, but many people don't realize in the scripture there's actually two Greek words for the word time. In English, we just use the word time over and over again, but in Greek there's two different ones. And if you're new to church, what you need to know is that the New Testament is actually written in Greek. So what are those two words? I'll show it to you. It's the word chronos and the word kairos. Kronos and Kairos, okay, those are the ones that you're going to see all over the place if you were to read it in the original language. Now, Kronos, typically, not always, but the majority of the time, it's going to refer to like a time or like a period of time, kind of like a chronological order. You know, like, okay, this is um, the time set aside for this, it's about like 2.5 hours, or, you know, kind of like a, a time period, if you will. Kairos, on the other hand, is a little bit different. It's this, it's the time, season, and appointed time. And so it's more of the, the essence of like, it's the right time to do it. See the difference? It's kind of a literal time and then like the right time or when it's supposed to happen. And in scripture, you can see these two ideas kind of painted throughout. Now, if we go back to this thing with Jesus, this one here is actually Kairos. And what Jesus is saying is, it's not necessarily like chronologically, like of course it is already time for the Feast of Booths, but it's not time I'm not supposed to go yet. 
Because what Jesus was really focusing on in his rhythms wasn't necessarily a chronological order of things, but really, how do I line myself up with exactly what it is that God wants to do? And here it is, when he wants to do it as well. How many of you guys know doing the right thing in the wrong timing often can make it the wrong thing? Isn't that true? And what Jesus is doing is he's starting to set this pattern. He says it in other places in John and others. It's like, my goal is really to do exactly what it is that God wants me to do and kind of set this, this ebb and flow, if you will. Now, the thing of it is today what we're going to use to illustrate this is actually surfing. Now, I don't know if you can see this right here, but uh, can you see this, this bolo head guy right here? Uh, if you're from the mainland or around the world, that means bald. But anybody know who this bald guy is right here? You want to guess? It's not me. I wish it was me. This, this is Kelly Slater. And can I tell you, just as a side note, some of the best compliments I've ever gotten is when people stop me in Hawaii and say, like, are you Kelly Slater? And I just say, yes. Yes, I am. No, I don't say that. But I want to, you know? Okay, surfing. What's the point of this? Well, as a matter of fact, I, I surfed a little bit when I first got to Hawaii. I've been here for about 18 years now. I've lived here longer than anywhere else. Matter of fact, when I came here, I wasn't bolo head. This is what I looked like. If you can see, I had these big, long curls. And I used to love surfing because, like, I would get on the wave and I would just, like, shake my head like this, you know? Now nothing cool happens. But back then, my hair would just flow. It was magical. But my point here is surfing is a great illustration uh, when it comes to Kronos and Kairos timing. Kronos would be like this. We can plan it on a, a literal schedule. You know what? I want to go surf at 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon. Or I want to surf on Saturday at 8.05 a.m. And although you can schedule it like this, it doesn't necessarily guarantee there's going to be waves there, does it? Because waves have this, this way of coming and going on the, their timetable, their own kind of like rhythm, like the right time space. And although we might want to schedule it, Really, you have to cooperate with like the bigger picture timing that's going on here. And that's a little bit similar to how it works when we follow after God. Is that God's not necessarily um, just stuck on our schedule, but he really has times and seasons for us to do things. There's a season for us maybe to work really, really hard and maybe a season for us to rest. Or maybe there's a, the right moment where you're really supposed to pursue some of your career goals. And other times he'll tell you, you know what, this isn't the season for that. I want you to kind of back off and kind of really focus in on family. But it's important for us to realize that when we're trying to figure out God's will, we're actually trying to figure out how do we step in rhythm with him and discover what are the seasons and the times for this to happen inside of my life. Now, that's a conceptual thing, but how do you practically do it? And so what I want to do today is just do this. I want to give you just three helpful practices, because here's the truth. The only one who really knows what's planned for your life, and the only one that can really help to guide you is God himself. He's the only one that he knows exactly what he's got planned for you and how to like move you into places of life and so that you would accomplish everything that he has for you to accomplish. And you've got to really be able to connect with him and figure that out. But I want to give us three practices that can help you go about doing that. Okay, so the first one might sound basic, but I can't tell you how critical this one is. It's this. If you want to figure out what God has for your life, you're going to have to spend regular time with him. You have to spend regular time with Jesus. Say, well, that sounds like kind of a pretty church answer. And when I say this, I don't mean you need to spend regular time going to church. I want you to say, I mean, that's important too. But really, it's regular time every day connecting with him. Now, let's use surfing again as our analogy, because I'm just going to keep this theme going for the day. Let's say that I, you know, watched a whole bunch of videos surfing on YouTube. And I thought about surfing. I talked about surfing. Am I ever going to really get better at surfing if I don't actually spend time in the water? No, I'm just going to gain more and more knowledge about surfing, but it doesn't mean I'm actually going to learn how to surf. Can I tell you, for a lot of us, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, that's what our Christian life can look like. You can have a ton of knowledge about God, but it doesn't mean you're actually necessarily spending time connecting with Him on a regular basis. And when you connect with Him, that's what's going to make it a game changer for you. 
Listen, you can see this throughout all of Scripture. I'll show you a couple examples. Uh, in Jeremiah, which is a book in the Old Testament, there was a time where there's a bunch of false prophets. People speaking and saying like, this is what God's saying, and God wasn't really saying it. And so God rebukes them through Jeremiah. And in the middle of rebuking these false prophets, he says this crazy statement to me. Check this out. He says about these false prophets, if they had stood before me and listened to me, then they would have spoken my words, and they would have turned my people from their evil ways and deeds. In other words, even for these guys who were false, these guys who were just making stuff up, even if they had taken the time to come and just stand before God and to listen to Him, He would have spoke to them. He would have guided them. It would have changed everything. And if that's true for false prophets, how much truer do you think it is for me and you? One way you can do this, as we talk about often, and this is a real famous scripture around here, but Psalms 119 says, Your word's a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. And you know, sometimes when people say like, oh, so really what it is, is in order to hear God's voice or to really connect with them, I, I need to read my Bible all the time, like 24-7. It's like, well, don't get me wrong. The Bible is important and you need to spend some time in it. It's going to help us. Uh, if you want to know what God's saying, it's often helpful to know what he said. And reading the word helps us to know what he said so you get used to his voice. But I do want to tell you, this isn't the only way that we connect with God. Matter of fact, maybe you're here today and you know what, you're sitting there and you're like, if I can be honest with you, I just, I have a hard time even knowing what that means. I don't even know how to connect with God or every time I try, it just seems like nothing ever happens. Anybody ever feel like that? Well, if that's you, I've got great news for you. You know, starting next week, we're going to do this uh, really unique series that I, I absolutely love. It's called Encounter. It's called Encountering God. And it's basically going to lay out pathways for you to actually experience God. See, here's what a lot of people don't realize. People connect to God in different ways. Uh, I'll give you an example. I had a friend who's about three to five years walking with Jesus, and he saw everybody, they would go into this, like, prayer room on their own, and they would pray um, in the morning by themselves. And they'd do it for, like, 30 minutes, and, you know, really, really, like, con contemplative and just kind of really being there. And so he thought, okay, that's what it looks like to connect with God. And so I remember sitting down with him after three years and, and asking him, like, oh, what's it like for you to connect with God? He's like, oh, you know, I pray in the morning and I go into my room and I, I go in my prayer closet and I just pray like that. And I said, well, well, how's it going for you? He's like, honestly, like, kind of embarrassed. He's like, I just, I fall asleep a lot. And I'm like, okay, so are you feeling like you're really, like, if you're honest, are you feeling like you're really connecting with God? He's like, honestly, no. I said, okay, here's what I want you to do. Stop going in that prayer closet. So what do you mean stop going to prayer class? Isn't that what you do? It's like, no, I actually think that you might connect with God in a different way. And so we set him out like, you know what? I want you just to start taking a walk in nature and just talk to God in that setting. And man, I met with him a week later and he was ecstatic. He's like, dude, I feel like I'm connecting with God for like the first time. And the truth is, is he's just discovering how he's meant to connect to God. Listen, all of us are going to have a relationship with God, but that relationship is going to look a little bit different. And as somebody who's pastored for a while, you know, decades now, I can tell you one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they think that everyone's relationship with God looks the same. And the truth is, is there's a bunch of different ways to go about it. And next week, we are going to spend four weeks exploring a bunch of different ways. And it's cool because we've created it where there's going to be assessments if you want to take it just to help you along the way. We're going to give you various experiments to do, but here's the bottom line of what we're trying to do. Our heart is that anybody at New Hope Windward would know that, that wants to encounter God, would discover at least one way that works for them so that they can regularly do that, that they feel fully empowered. I'm believing that you're going to find two or three that work for you. I know that I have two or three go-to ways that aren't the same as everyone else, and I'll be sharing some of those along the way. But I just want to encourage you guys, listen, the next four weeks is totally worth being here. Because when you figure out how to encounter God and you figure out how to connect to Him as you're uniquely created, it changes everything. As a matter of fact, when we go back to this, that's one of these helpful practices because if you're in the habit of just spending time with him it's amazing how he just speaks to you along the way 
You just, you learn to hear his voice so clearly. It's like when you spend a lot of time with a significant other or a friend and you're in a giant crowd or you're in a, the, a shopping mall and you hear them talk, it's like you can pick their voice out from any others. And how did you do that? Just by spending time. And in the same way, when we regularly start to do this, I tell you, he just starts to guide you. And it's really easy to start to navigate and figure out, okay, this is what I think God wants me to do. Second thing I want to say in this, if you want to regularly allow God to speak to you and like move through and guide you where you're supposed to go, you got to surround yourself with a few good people. Listen, if you've been in church for a while, you're probably thinking like the iron sharpens iron scriptures coming up or, you know, like uh, a cord of three strands isn't easily broken. And those are really, really good scriptures. But I'm actually going to take us to a little bit of a different place. And what I want to do is I want to point out something because especially to those of you guys that have been in church for a long time or followed Jesus for a long time, one of the things that can start to happen is there almost starts to creep in this almost like, like, I got this figured out. Like, I know how to do this. And it's, it's a very subtle version of what we call like almost like spiritual pride. And it's like me and Jesus, I know exactly what to do. I know how he speaks. I'm just going to move forward. And I don't really need to listen to everyone else because I got it all figured out. Listen, in my 18 years of pastoral ministry, can I tell you, that attitude is usually the thing that happens right before we make mistakes. It just kind of goes in there. Proverbs will say it like this. It says, the fool thinks their own way is right, but the wise do what? Actually listens to others. Listen, if you want to know what God has for your life, one of the best things I can do, encourage you to do is to put two or three good people around you. Now, I want to just qualify that. When I say good people, um, I want to add one more to Scripture. They also need to be people who love Jesus. And the reason why this is important is when you love Jesus, your goal is the same. It's to do whatever God's will is and to really follow after Him. And there's other good people all around us. That's totally true in there. But if their number one goal isn't to love Jesus and follow Him, then what they're going to start to do is give you advice that might be according to their value system. And you just have different goals. My, my favorite analogy for this is like if we were uh, riding in a car. I've used this here before, but if we're riding in a car and we're here in Hawaii and I wanted to go um, from Kaneohe to Sandy's, but you wanted to go up to the North Shore. And although we might love each other and really, really be good, the truth is, is we're actually heading in two different directions. And when it comes to having other people really come in and speak into your life, it's important that you're going in the same place. Now, when it comes to God's will or figuring out what He has for your life, there's a couple reasons why I think this really, really matters and is really helpful. Some of us, uh, we tend to have one type of personality or the other. Some of us tend to be people that, you know, are a little bit more... Um, Kind of like ready, fire, aim. Anybody else know anybody like that? That tends to move me a little bit. It can be. And what I'll do is as soon as something comes into my head, oh, that must be God, and I'll just start running after it. And sometimes when I surround myself by two or three friends uh, or just wise people, even my wife at some times in this, she'll speak in and she'll just say, you know, honey, I think that's great, but why don't we just slow down and just kind of pray and consider this? And it's amazing as I start to allow others to speak in, is it helps me figure out this kairos, this timing space. Because there's times when I just want to run faster than God seems to be actually doing. And what I think is God actually ends up just being me. But how do I figure that out? Well, thank God I'm not by myself. I've got a few good people surrounding me. Now, others of you, you find yourself on the other side of this. You maybe move a little bit slower. And part of the reason you move slower is you just don't want to make a mistake. Matter of fact, when it comes to making decisions, sometimes it's like you'll just like sit and just go back and forth on it. Like, is it me? Is it that? Is that? I don't know. And you almost just get like this analysis paralysis. And sometimes for you, friends can come in and they're going to just encourage you to say, hey, you know what? Like, I think that what you're thinking about, I totally feel like this is something that God has. Like, it lines up with scripture. I think you should just go for it. Matter of fact, even if you're like, wrong a little bit, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It'll be easy to correct, and they'll just start to encourage you. But can you see how other people coming in really start to help? Now, I know for some of us, we're sitting there, and we're thinking to ourselves, like, I don't even know who these people are or where to find those people. Like, I've got some good friends, but I don't know if I would say, like, these guys, my friends, like, their number one priority is to love Jesus and follow God. Uh, hey, I've got great news for you. Um, this is the time in our church, uh, starting next week, where we actually all come together in just little groups. Uh, you know that Encountering God series I talked about a little bit ago? 
um, we're actually going to all come together for these four weeks and we're going to start meeting in different groups. Now some are going to be Zoom only, some are going to be in person, uh, some of us are just going to grab a couple friends and jump in the carport. But really the best way to even figure out how to encounter God isn't necessarily to take a test or do anything, but it's really to have conversations with other people that can almost act as mirrors for you. Just to kind of like mirror back. And matter of fact, maybe you used to meet in a group, but just with COVID, you really haven't. And I want to encourage you, starting next week, why don't you just restart that group for four weeks? If you want to do it digitally, do it digitally. If you want to do it uh, at your house, do it at your house, whatever you want to do in that you feel comfortable but all you got to do if you want to do that is simply this if you go on our website uh, and you'll scroll down you'll find this little encountering God banner and right here where it says new series you'll see two buttons and one of the buttons is going to say the download the guides now click on that and it'll give you all the materials that you need to be able to host this group and you say well, what do you mean group like like I got to do something real fancy or big it's like no 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 here it is, just grab two or three people that love God, just friends, family, even people met, and just, just come together and just go through it. The thing's so self-explanatory, but I tell you, you do steps like this. This is one of the best ways to start to find community that help you figure out how to follow God. Now, some of you guys are like, well, I don't even know people still yet. Well, I've got good news for you as well. Uh, if you want to join a new group or to host a new group and to have other people jump in with you, all we want you to do today is this, is just take out your phone, you can do it right now, and just type in 45777. That should be really easy, especially for some of us Hawaii people. 777, that's like the numbers you like to see in Vegas, right? 45777, and then you just text new groups. Remember, there's a space here and it's plural. Here, I did it earlier, this is from my phone. You put it in, you text new groups here, you press it, and they're gonna give you a link. And once that link pops up, it'll give you an option to either join an existing group, or if you feel like you wanna host a group, which I can't encourage you guys enough to do it, uh, that's probably one of the easier ways to just get to know a bunch of different people in there. Um, but either way, you can go here and that'll be an easy way to go about it. Okay, sound good? Okay. Last thing, the third practical thing is this. This one might sound a little different, but it's this. I want you to make a habit of being part of the larger church. You know, one of the things that's happened in this COVID reality is we've actually gotten a lot more isolated than we've ever been. Sure, we're connecting online, um, but we're doing it from more of like a, a watching standpoint than an interacting standpoint. And the body of Christ is always meant to have a component of interaction. And yeah, that's going to happen in, in a lot of the small group spaces, but I don't know what it is. There's just something that happens when we're all together. See, I've gotten this habit over the, the years that I followed God, and sometimes I'll get in this space where it's like, oh, I'm spending time with God, and I got different people around me, and uh, you know, I, I didn't always work for the church. Uh, matter of fact, there's a couple of years, a couple of years back where um, like I wasn't officially pastoring anywhere. And it was amazing to me how sometimes in those times I thought to myself, like, ah, you know, like, I, I know how to read the Bible on my own and connect to God. I, I, maybe I just, maybe I shouldn't go to church or just do something else. And I feel like God just like started to like, just kind of almost like, for lack of better words, hit me upside the head. And he did so with even scriptures kind of like this. It says this in Hebrews. And let us consider how to stir one another. Stir one another towards love and good works, not neglecting meeting together as in some of them the habit of, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. See, one of the easiest habits to fall into is not coming all together. And what I'm telling you is if you want to really be able to discover what it is that God has for you, one helpful way to do that, for whatever reason, is when we all come together, something happens. Say, so what do you mean? Well, sometimes you'll be in the room and maybe something's said that's like specifically for you. But sometimes it's these side conversations. You know, as I start to close, I just want to give you an example of what this was like for me. You know, um, oh, by the way, if you're looking for an opportunity for this, next week we are starting our in-person services. So February 21st, Regal Cinemas, we are going to go for it. We are excited. We know not all of you are able to join, maybe for some just different health reasons or kind of where you're at. But I want to encourage you, if you're able, I want to encourage you to come. I also want to encourage you to bring somebody with you if you like. I mean, people are going to be spread out. It's safe. It's going to be 
amazing. We have one theater set aside for your family to come together. So it's just, it's going to be a great space to do this. But I want to just share a story from my own life, if I can, just as I kind of close, because um, it, it's really fresh, and it just illustrates this pretty well, I think. You know, the other day, uh, a while back, I woke up, and one of the ways that I gather all together, um, there's a, an in-person prayer thing that we started to do. You know, people stay distance and all that, but we, we just pray together. But for me, I live in Kaneohe, uh, which if you're not from Hawaii, is on one side of the island. But this, this prayer gathering actually is in town, and it happens early. I remember I woke up one day and I felt like just like this thing like on my heart where God's like, I, I need you to get up and go to this thing this morning. And can I be honest with you? I didn't want to go at all. I was facing a, a new project that I was leading on. And it was a project that was requiring me, requiring me to like be a trailblazer. It's like a lot of us are doing this in COVID, but it's just like brand new ways of thinking. It just feels really challenging. And part of me started to even wonder like, God, is this even what you want me to do? So I remember I, I got up, I went, I, I drove over, and the whole way I'm just grumbling. I'm just grumbling. And I get to this space, and it's good, you know, like I feel encouraged just being around people. And, you know, they had some like just the different prayer and stuff, just, you know, life coming in. But right at the end of this, this guy comes walking up to me and he says, man, hey, can I just pray for you? I just really feel like I'm supposed to pray for you. I was like, yeah, sure. He's like, I don't know. I just feel like God's like just putting on my heart to remind you like, you're supposed to be a trailblazer. And sometimes there's just nobody that, to follow in terms of model after. You gotta just go for it. I almost fell on the floor. I mean, this happened 2021. Because here's a guy, and this is what's happening is the body of Christ, the larger body is actually encouraging the body at the same time. And I thought to myself, man, if I wasn't in the room, I would have been left just trying to figure this out all on my own. And guys, that's what I just want you to know. If you really want to figure out how do I know what God has for my life, it's not just you. He's meant to do it in a bigger context of community. Yes, we are supposed to connect regularly to Him, have a few people around us, but also the bigger body acts as this encouraging space. And as you saw in that scripture, we just encourage each other forward. And I don't know about you, but I could use some courage this year, some encouragement as we start to really start to navigate these new chapters and seasons of our lives. So I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're facing, but here's what I do want to tell you. God sees you, He cares, and He will guide you. Scripture says it like this, if we pull close to Him, He will pull close to us. And if our hearts are fully His, then it's like He looks down, He comes behind us, and He goes before us and He begins to guide us. And that's my prayer for each and every one of us, that we would be a people who didn't just know about God, but actually were able to encounter Him, to understand His will, and to follow Him all the days of our life. Would you bow your heads with me as we close in prayer? God, today, I know there's probably people that were looking for a specific answer. And I pray, God, that as they go out this week and as they spend some time with you on their own, or as they're having a conversation with two or three people that really love you, or maybe even as they join us next Sunday in person, Lord, I pray your answer would come in one of those facets and that it would be so clear because God, we're all meant to connect to you. We're all meant to have you guide us and to lead us. And Father, right now, I just, I just pray that whatever is getting in the way of that happening, God, that we would just put it to the side. Lord, if there's doubt or if there's fear or if there's disappointment, Lord, I know people are having so many different feelings and different things, but God, we pray that you would just bring hope inside each one of us and that we would be able to hear your voice clearly and that you would lead us all the days of our life. So Father, be with us, guide us. We love you. We praise you. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here at New Hope Windward today. And again, next week is the Encounter Series. So make sure you jump into a group. You're ready to go because it's going to be a powerful time where we are going to encounter God, many of us, for the first time in a brand new way. Well, that's it for today. So our worship team is going to come lead us in one final song. But other than that, we will see you guys next week. Welcome me. I was.
Christian family, isn't it great to be called a child of God? Well, thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Sunday. Hope you enjoyed service, and I hope it helped you today. So we just hope that you have a great week coming up, and we pray that God blesses you all your days.